you'll notice that the drivetrain, well the engine and the transmission are on the floor now. I've already removed or uncoupled the engine hoist from it. So I just need to get to this point and remove the chain on both sides. Get this out of the way because I need to make moves, make things happen. I'll get this out of the way as well. This is what I use to lift the rear end to kind of keep it balanced. And right now it's sitting on board. Well, and a 2x4 underneath there, just to keep the, the studs off the ground. What you'll be seeing next will be me installing, I've mentioned this, fuel rail injectors, uh, vacuum tubing, coolant piping, just a few odds and ends, really. The, the rear side isn't too bad, but maybe maybe it will come, come to it. Pretty much, um, I think this will be a video with sound i'm not going to i do not intend to speed it up or anything and i might mention this if i do forget to mention this but this is the reason i just wanted to preemptively say that the engine hoist the engine lift brackets are going to be installed throughout the process so i will leave out a few things because i want to be able to lift the engine without breaking things in the way then eventually I'll just, you know, once everything is set in, uh, once everything is installed and seated in the car, I will finish it all off. Okay, so for now, let's set the camera down and start with, let's go with what? The fuel rail, the fuel injector. I think that's where I want to start. Man, I've been wanting to do that so badly. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. I'm trying to see if I can get lighting that's any better than what we have right now. No, that's a little too bright, I think. Is it? This is better than nothing. Definitely not that. Yeah, I'll make do with the lighting that we have. I'm doing my best to edit these videos as little as possible, so... I'm gonna have to make do with whatever comes out. <laughs> It's a lot of footage assembling these engines, at least to the level of care that I would like to put into them. Okay, well, I think from here we can kind of see things. How much of the engine can we see? Huh, not too much. At least the important bits are visible, though. So that's what we're going to focus on. There are a few things we need to to do, in or I'd like to do, or that I do, in preparation for the fuel rails. One, let's remove this PCV tube. This is from the older system. Can tell that's an yeah. This is an O3 right here, and so is this one. Obviously, different length tubes. Need to do a better job of labeling these things. Okay, O3. This is the correct one for this system here. And it's maybe not exactly 100% soft and supple, but it still bends when, when you ask it to bend. That's been tested. Just wiping some oil off. Make sure, give it a fighting chance going in, right? I'll need my pliers. This here is tube, vacuum tubing, and that will come into play because of all the other dried. The small diameter tubes don't seem to hold up as well as the larger ones do. So, and I don't think they're formed either, so they break a, li a little easier. I got this Prestone tube from O'Reilly's. The number is WV0532. Windshield washer hose, by the way, and vacuum tubing. Five and three, five thirty seconds diameter. That's what it is. Four millimeters. That's the ID. Okay, so I'll set this off to the side as well. Over here, well, let me remove this fully. I've got 
coil packs off to the side. These coil packs that I have not installed are the ones that would usually get um, impacted by the hooks as I lift the um, as I lift the engine. Back when I used to use belt straps, it wasn't a problem, but with with the hooks as large as they are, you're bound to hit something and break something. And I do have a few of those as evidence of what could happen. Good thing I've got millions of spares. Give or take a few thousands. Accuracy is a little off there. So what I'd like to do, I I did do my cleaning before installing the manifold, obviously, but still, let's just blow out oh, yeah, here. More PVC tube in here. Let's just do It's not too not like surgical clean because you, sh you should see how dirty these ports are when you remove the injectors but again what I'm doing is not designing failure into the system right got two things I'll talk about seemingly unrelated that's Vaseline right there This right here is your fuel rail. Why do we have Vaseline in the mix? Well, for removal and for cleaning, I usually use WD-40. It does a wonderful job of cleaning when needed. On the way in, however, instead of engine oil in a system like this, I like to use Vaseline. It's inert, you know, doesn't react with anything well, that I know yet. And especially in an automotive setting like now, it's just a way to lube up the o-rings so that when they go in at least you don't cut them against the, uh, the metal and it does nothing for the pintle caps in this case but I just like to do this and uh, good thing injector o-rings are very hardy they they can take a lot of abuse the thing that actually fails with your injectors if you remove them and replace them again is going to be the pintle caps and maybe I'll, I'll give a close-up let me get a little closer so this is your injector setup you actually have an o-ring in there that can't show right now maybe if I have my older manifold to show then this is the body of the injector you have another o-ring over here then this horn colored plastic is the pintle cap so what I do is just load those up so that why not? It's just practice that I was taught always never never insert it dry. <laughs> yeah, many aspects of life basically. <laughs> Man, it must be really cold in here. It's what? Well, it's not too bad. But the Vaseline is hard, so that's what I was thinking. You're working in some tough conditions, huh? You're not trying to drown this thing in in lube, just and I know it's not official or professional assembly lube, but it's better than nothing. So my preference to not use W40 on the way in is it's more of a cleaner to me, less of a less of a of a lubricant you know in this case so I I don't want to cause any further breakdown of anything else in there we're done cleaning whatever's and that's why I blow the air it should be dry by now okay so applied my Vaseline there's something I need you to see over here these are the spaces let me put this away Hang this over here over the edge to speak about this. So the normal setup for the fuel systems is this. You have your bolt holding your fuel rail down, but you also have a damper. And this is the damper, the plastic thing over there. So I'm gonna I'm going to remove the bolts. These are 12 millimeter bolts. I'm doing that in all you have four of them 
Maybe I need to zoom back out so we can see what's going on. You have four of them, one here, another one here, and same thing on the other side. Kinda hidden, I guess. Okay, so this is the game plan. Install, install the, you know, flip it over, have the injectors over the injector ports, and then just push down. Makes a nice, satisfying sound, actually. So, I don't know if I can zoom in and still show what I'm doing, or you can just kind of picture it. This is my first video trying to show my assembly process, so pardon me if it's not all that entertaining. In the future, with help, a camera crew and all that, we intend to do better things in the future. We're, we've been making investments. Okay. So we are ready. Add this over. Okay, that side is good. This side is gonna be good. Okay, send it over the hole. There are two ways to do this. Let, let me do the first way on this side. The first method is this. Push the whole thing down and you have four of these so you should make sure they're all uh, properly seated. Make sure the holes are all aligned, you know, just wiggle it. Make sure nothing is sticking out too far. You don't want to bend your rail. This square tube is a it works a little better than the v uh the v6s because those rails were a little less um robust when it came to bending them so if you bent your rail like that and you push it down basically one of them wouldn't go in or wouldn't engage fully so here listen out just push it down yeah not as impressive as I was hoping for, honestly. But, everything's in there. I guess that's the thing about lubricant. <laughs> Takes away all the noises. Then, put the bolt over there. I have to tell you something about this one here. It could get a little tricky, because look, everything's in the way. Oh, a few things are in the way, I guess. Yeah, everything's good. I can see inside here that all the green has disappeared in the hole, so that's good. Okay, that's, let me leave that alone for now. Let me jump over to the other side. So now the left side, I mean, doesn't really matter at this point. Make sure everything is all well centered. And you can do this with the with the engine and the car still, obviously. I the bolt is long enough that you can do this. Just get it started. Alright, pull it up, it's engaged. Then do the same over here. Just get it started, right? And once that is working. Now you can go ahead and push everything down. Side and middle. Side and middle. At least that made some noise, but it's a little underwhelming. It makes a nicer pop noise when it's all dry. A lubrication, so okay. So I just wiggle it, make sure everything is good, and then I can go ahead and tie this down. There is a torque rating, what do you expect, right? So, what do you think? Do you think I'm gonna use a torque rate rating? Is 
I said, there is a torque rating, um, which I'm going to ignore for the purposes of this video. Let's just say use a torque wrench, don't be like me. Nice and secure, that keeps it down. Okay, that's not going anywhere. So, can't blow back up. All right, good. Let that one be. Let's jump back to the other side. This bolt here, this one's easy. Down it goes. That's easy. Now this one here, there's a lot of obstruction. Let's let's try to get in there, get a little closer. The challenge with this is that because of this tube right here, you don't have a straight shot down to it. It's a little, well, I can kind of sort of get it right now, but it's not ideal. You don't really have a very good chance to get it. So there are two ways to, to address this. One, let me move that out of the way. One, remove these bolts over here and pull this part up and then you'll have access to, to that bolt. Nice, clean access. Personally, I don't like unnecessarily opening um, <laughs> fuel systems, so I'm gonna leave that there because I would, my impulsion would make me want to buy the O-rings for that system and redo it, but it's fine, it should be fine. So the two ways I go about this, let me, let me show that. My first option is usually my wrench, my gear wrench. If you can get it in there, like now, you'll have a few microscopic turns, right? Like that. You can make it happen. I mean, obviously, hand tighten as far as you can first, just to make things a little easier. And then make your gear wrench work for you. So here's one of the ways you could do it. But as you can see, there isn't much because of, well, I mean, it's, it gets there. Don't get me wrong. The other way I've done it is with a very short, stubby socket. So with that, obviously, because of this design, this is not going to work. Watch this. have to use an extension, something thin and narrow to get through this. I mean, you can tell that they tried to design it around, you know, to help you, but thanks, thanks for the effort. That's, that's all I can say. <laughs> okay, so sometimes this works. Having a skinny, a really stubby one, and then a skinny extension, right? Skinny extension to be able to go over that, then the stubby in there. But I just think it works best with, with my gear wrench. So I'll attack it from this side. Obviously that makes it a little challenging to use a torque wrench, right? But again, kind of know what I'm doing here, so it works out. I feel like I remember doing something from this side, but I really don't remember what. Yeah, you don't really have much room coming from this way. So this is your best bet. But so the fuel rail has been installed. Everything's good. All right. So let's work on the other tubes around the, around the engine. 